Hi, welcome to my channel. In this upload, I'm working with an image from Monet called the Lily Pond, Pond of Lilies. And uh, this is the finished page spread. So if you're watching this hour long <laughs> recorded <laughs> session, you will see me work on this from start to finish. Hi, and uh, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to turn on the camera because now I am working with texture and uh, I want to attempt something with texture that I've never tried before so why not bring you guys along with me on the journey and since I'm doing this uh, in pre-recorded streams I can actually pause and uh, skip over some of the tedious parts so it won't be that long but well, you see, <coughs> my thing is that <laughs> uh, the theme that I'm working with right now on my desk is creating texture. And it makes me think about the water lilies from Claude Monet. Because I know it's abstraction, but still, it's the freaking texture of his uh, brush strokes that gives life to his uh, flowering lilies, to the moving water to the um, the colors and um, I've never seen in person his uh, beautiful beautiful room where he displays the water lilies um, but I got a fraction of it cut out from uh, a picture on the, the internet on my screen right now as a reference photo and it's very abstract and I'm not sure exactly where I got the picture from. It's a company that made puzzles, uh, so art puzzles, so I d don't think that I want to show the reference picture <laughs> if I get in trouble. But um, basically it's abstraction and I want to try working with marks and texture to hopefully get uh, the impression of his uh, water lilies pond. pond. <laughs> I'm using pattern paper. I'm looking at this pattern paper. <clears throat> the circular formation on the pattern may be helpful for placement of lilies in the water. I like the aqua blue of this pattern paper right here. So that could actually be some aqua blue water. And then <laughs> I want some green uh, I think it's a tree actually that has a sleeping willow branches or something coming down like almost like a hairy curtain from above but you don't really see the tree itself so that's why I was thinking about this print up here that's light nice a little bit stuff going on on the edges but not much so let me start tearing off this pattern paper and glue it down to this double spread in my journal and then see whatever happens there okay guess what I'm gonna give it a go <laughs> this is uh, from a com company called smart cut they produce puzzles and I don't think that Monet when he created his wonderful abstract paintings as an impressionist ever thought about that he would be like the perfect painter to put on chocolate boxes, postcards, puzzle pieces, but he truly is because there is some sort of harmony in his things and it's very light to look at so it's not like heavy, it's uh, bright colors. And the image that I'm looking at and getting inspired from, and there is a ton, I'm telling you, if you try Google Monet and <laughs> Water Lilies, you will get a ton. But um, since I'm working with texture, I'm more interested in a cut piece showing his style of texture. And I can see that he's got very circular style, like swirl. Can you see how uh, the, it seems to me like the way he is um, composing his huge water lily pond paintings is that he chose an area to place like a small island of 
water lilies. Then he divided up with something that could remind me of a cloud formation on a sky. And then he can start the next island of water lilies. And since they're separated from this island, he can actually pick a different color for the flowers on the next island of water lilies. But I'm looking at his painting and I, I don't think, even think that they take place in water. For me, it's like looking up in the sky, like a fluffy cloud formations in a circular motion. So I think the texture... I'm not going to use acrylic or oil because I'm just uh, going to make like a, a study. You, yeah, a study, that's the key word here. <laughs> My study is going to be focused on these swirls and the way that he has kind of composed his painting with an island down here, another island of flowers divided by a sky formation and then to bring that heavenly sky down to a place on earth he's inserting these branches from a sleeping willow tree so you get something recognizable otherwise this I don't know if <laughs> it's abstract you know so if you just look at this cut right here and remove the branches from the tree you would be a little bit confused whether are these like mountains I mean your brain's got a lot of open suggestions to what am I looking at so um, yeah I think uh, I'm looking at his blocking of color he doesn't really have a vertical uh, cut line except in the paintings where he's inserting that infamous white bridge then he really needs that uh, vertical shoreline but in most of his um, paintings it's actually the whole lake that we are seeing the whole pond so I think I would I would love to work with some sort of a um, um, horizontal <laughs> water line just to kind of be able to cut down some sort of proportions and yeah I, I would like to work like that so now I'm gonna put the, my patterns papers together but I just wanted to show you the picture that I'm looking at and back to my desk well I got a big rather big double spread right here I so would love to have like the horizontal water shoreline and some vertical lines like he had on his bridge because I, I really like the line work uh, so <laughs> I put down the pattern paper with that in mind like this could be the shoreline and then the the horizontal um, line is here and the vertical line for the bridge could be up here but then I'm also thinking, <laughs> why do I always have to deviate from the reference picture? I think it actually muddies it up for myself and give myself extra challenge because not only do I have to look at the reference photo, but also calculate in my changes. So <laughs> back to the drawing board, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to attempt trying to work with the reference picture and even though it's going to be a little bit difficult I'm going to try to make a cluster formation of clouds and then have another island of water lilies coming up here so um, yeah so so far I've broken up the pattern paper into some sort of a v-shaped lake or pond so you get the feeling of space like you're looking at something <laughs> and then I try to insert the pattern paper with the circular pattern as um, where I want some of the water lilies to be up here is going to be another island of water lilies <laughs> and here I'm gonna try and simulate that break that he does in, in his paintings but I'm thinking that I would um, use stencils 
with clear uh, medium, transparent medium, so the stencils are going to be like a glaze on top of my drawing with even more circular um, pattern. <laughs> and then I will try and work with oil pastels because they seem to be a very quick way for me to, to do because I can mix by smudging with my fingers <laughs> instead of breaking out a palette of acrylic so I wouldn't be so messy you know so yeah let me get started but why this uh, in the texture section it's because I believe that even in abstract art there is some sort of texture that the artist is trying to follow as a base rule for the rest of his painting so uh, in this case where I'm looking at Monet's painting and I can see that it looks like he actually took an oil pastel on top of his oil painting and make those circular moves. And um, yeah, it really inspires me to, <laughs> to try and attack this <laughs> composition. So wish me luck. So I prepped the canvas with gesso on some spots and then I grabbed the titanium white and swirled in some sky formations and now I'm grabbing something called modeling paste and just by eyeballing I'm so not going to have any sketch lines in this because <laughs> I wanted to be able to regret and move stuff if um, if I goof up, right? So with modeling paste and just a pointy spatula, I'm thinking that I will go in and place where the bloom of the water lilies are going to be. And hopefully the kind of raised texture will um, be beautiful when I color them in. Uh, we never know, right? <laughs> Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Ooh, he's, you know, got an uneven number of 7 flowers down here. So I'm going to do the same. Give myself 7 just actually blobs of uh, modeling paste. And since it's a very... Um, significant flower that I'm painting I will try and place my spatula the way I hopefully can uh, gain from later on I think that the what I'm going for here with the modeling paste is layers of paint like imagine this was an oil painting then this thick modeling paste will represent a very giant glob of dried up oil paint so uh, in order not to waste a ton of products in many cases you can actually go in with modeling paste and push down that effect before you start your actual painting save you a lot of paint I guess Eight, two, three, four. we are missing three more I'm not worried about the shape because I keep telling myself that it's an abstract so relax Monet is impressionistic very sensible feeling you need to <laughs> think about when uh, you look at his when I look at his work it's like he's depicting a feeling an emotion so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm missing one hmm. placement placement <laughs> sound like real estaters like it's all about location 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 <laughs> But uh, seriously, I, I am thinking 
totally about positioning things after working with this serious journal. <laughs> Up here, I can see on the reference photo that he's shifting gear. He's working with complementary colors like yellow next to purple. Where down here, he's working more with the teal, aqua, and a pink. So he's got into he only got five flowers up here. So I'm totally gonna do the same, only aiming for five. And since they're a little bit further away, I think I can try and work them in a little smaller. But the uneven uh, paste is uh, simply just uh, going to give that very uh, random texture. So I kind of love that I'm just applying it with the tip of a spatula because I don't necessarily want so many brush strokes on this uh, spread right here because it seems to me like instead of brush strokes he actually got hands-on painted crayon work you know what I mean like he hasn't like used a brush to do his swirl but it seems to me like he has taken an a crayon made out of actual oil paint and then drawn in his, um, his circles which I find like totally interesting imagine working with a stick like that awesome I don't own such a stick, they are rather expensive, so I have never attempted buying any one of them, <laughs> but one day, maybe one day. Now I'm sitting here thinking if I should try and make the curves in modeling paste of some of the giant leaves that these um, water lilies are. placed in in this kind of an island of, of flowers so I'm simply just deciding that they should have like <laughs> like, a, like a, a pattern where maybe the tip of the leaf is going to point outwards out to the sides So I'm trying to give myself a kind of a heart shaped giant leaf. There is a lot of detail on what's close to you and not so much what's in the distance. So I think that the going in with the modeling paste on the object that's nearest to the viewer is going to have a bigger effect and then not so much use it on the island of water lilies that are pushed back in the background I'm wearing a headset with uh, a mic piece on <laughs> really uh, a alarmed and alert that I'm not going to be huffing and puffing into the mic okay into three I should give myself like five of these I think to uh, put a number on it So going in with five that are petal sh heart shaped and then coming in with some strokes maybe of unfinished petals would be a good idea. One more. Maybe right here. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm thinking about just doing some round shapes. So it will be an impression of the edge of of the petals in the water. I can kind of feel that <laughs> I am, cannot be so generous with the spatula on these because then I would actually deposit like a, a thick edge and I don't really like that look of a thick edge <laughs> so I should totally flip my journal so that I will have some strokes that are going in a different direction. Okay, so I'm done spreading out the modeling paste and the spread. And as you can see, I am not super generous with the the gloves it's actually thin layers so it's basically just a suggestion of an edge coming up from the water so they are not like lying flat down on the water surface if i can hold my journal <laughs> you will be able to see when i slant it that you know I, I got lips sticking up from the page and then it's uh, blended out with the pattern paper so I don't have many fully shaped leaves um, so it's it's just like a, a corner of of a, a petal that's kind of sticking up from the water surface that I'm using the modeling paste to illustrate with so now it's going to dry and then hopefully when I start adding color on this I'm using oil sticks because I don't want the plastic surface to repel any water soluble color so if I went over this with watercolor it it will repel and the paste will act like some sort of a resist not totally but it will change the hue of the color that I lay so it will look like really weird <laughs> so I can't wait to try and go in with my fingers and the oil pastel and work on this some more okay I got super much white on this uh, page spread so to make sure that my camera doesn't mess up my color <laughs> value I'm just gonna place this colorful pouch right here to avoid some of the white out of the page I got the idea to go in with a finger dauber dauber <laughs> and then uh, use some green shade ink and just brush off the raised profile of my um, dried up modeling paste just to give me like the first coat of color on these um, plants <laughs> I want a juicy ink pad so because I don't have any re-inkers to it I got water mixed up with glycerin in this bottle so I'm just lightly gonna spray my ink pads to activate them because it's been like a while since I have used them so I like to do stuff like that <laughs> okay let me um, try and work in some colors see oh I like that this is simply just going to help me when I have to come to color in the background of the you know the the water itself and this example right here you can really tell that it's a raised petals sticking up from the water 
in one end and then the other end is disappearing underwater. And I think it's um, something that you often see in a water lily pond is that not every leaf is swimming on the surface in full size. Some are pushed under. So I really, really enjoy that the modeling paste can give you a help to create that faux illusion. And it is truly an inexpensive way of getting some texture effect on paintings. If you are making this in acrylic, it will save you a ton of product. If you go in and raise your elements with you could actually use stencil paste, you know, the paste that dries up nicely and and thick when you're stenciling. You don't necessarily need to use something called modeling paste. So just ordinary stencil paste, if you've got that in your stash, you can grab that. And if you don't have a spatula like I have, you can just dip in your finger and then try and sculpt, sculpt with your finger. <laughs> Sounds a little bit messy, but um, yeah, sometimes we need a uh, hands-on on our projects. Oh, I love this leaf right here. It's going to be awesome. My plan is to go in with several coats on this um, draw a, a drawing, you could call it, because I want to use the clear stencil medium as a second kind of layer so that I get two different kinds of texture on this um, page spread. But I think it's fun to work like this, you know, not just having a flat um, apply of color, but really try and work in some raised areas. And if you don't have like a, a flower stencil that you can stencil directly on your work, then you still have the opportunity of using your your paste as a tool for stuff like this, for instance. I'm so glad that I'm going in with this ink because it's almost like white in white, even to myself, not only to the camera. <laughs> so I have to rediscover where I put the head of the flower blooms. Eight, two, three, four. I'm missing one. Can you see that? There's supposed to be five up here. Is it really that one? It's not that raised. There's a little bit texture there. I think I was too stingy with that one. I'm switching over to a different color ink. With the different color ink, I'm trying to sketch in where I think I should go with my <coughs> oil pastel stick. I also feel that the more green tones in different shades that I can get on this page spread, the better. Okay, enough with the inks. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to the 
oil pastels. I definitely think that I should practice on some that I can cover up pretty easily if I don't like it. Like, don't start with that one right there, for instance. That's going to be like smack in your eye. So I'm going to take a leaf that's, you know, a little bit on the edge of the page to see. I'm working with Sennelier oil pastels. I got them in this tray to protect them. Um, let me try with a soft color first. And because the pastel is so soft, if I just scrape it on top of the modeling, modeling paste, it will pick up some pigment. And now you can see why I wanted to ink in a base color because I'm going to wear down my pastel if I had to color in the whole petal with the stick because the paste will grab and eat up the pastel. So now I'm, I'm able to, to work and use less product because I already got some sort of a base coat. Already now I like the different texture that I get. Um, let me zoom in. I can't really zoom. I can do the heavy lifting zoom. I like the way that it lies on top of the modeling paste showing the streaky work from the spatula. Because um, in my head, streaks sometimes symbolize things done in a hurry, in a swipe. So it goes well in my um, general feeling of abstract art. It's like a, I'm picturing that a person has had limit on time and had to quickly sketch down the essence of, for instance, a lily pond. So it will be made out of quick strokes that kind of translate in my mind into lots of energy and it's very difficult for me to copy them because <laughs> I think there is some action and some energy in quick strokes that last aggressive swipe you know <laughs> but it's very uh, difficult for me to do them on purpose when I'm working on my own sheets because they always look so planned out and I really don't think that's the the whole idea behind them. What I'm trying to with looks like I'm doing a shadow of the leaf but basically I'm not. I'm just trying to sketch in the leaf that's next to or under these petals. So let me sit and fiddle with this a little bit more and then come back. But I think you get the point of what I'm doing here. Well, I guess that there are like several ways to get texture. <laughs> so why not having this Miss Swiper here help me out? <laughs> oh man, just want <laughs> to turn on the camera and show you. You know, how I'm struggling to be allowed to do this page spread. I'm going in now with a darker value of the green and I'm concentrating on the place where the flowers are going to be. Trying to give them some sort of a round shaped petal to float on. So I'm keeping it totally abstract. I'm trying not to have so much linear work. So it will have this kind of a soft feeling to it. 
So I try not to sketch in like a full shape of a leaf because I can see that Monet is using like some messy circle shapes. <laughs> so it's like the brain that's going to complete the illusion of a of a petal rather than him showing it with brush strokes. So I'm thinking I will try and copy that approach to get the best result. I'm not uh, sad that I'm actually hitting some of the paste where the red or pink colors are going to be for the flowers because the complementary color for red and you know red tones are actually green so it hitting them down here <laughs> can help me create uh, the the dark shadow for the the flower um, <laughs> now I'm like sparingly depositing more green because I know that I have to come in with some of the blue for the water so maybe now is a good time to try and get in the blue tones for the water for the water I'm gonna grab a blue gray and then this I think it's like an aqua teal it says cauldron green <laughs> cauldron <laughs> it's like witch witchy name <laughs> so the witch knows oh that one <laughs> kind of a funny name for a, a color a lot of the color names on these pastel sticks are naturally in French because uh, Sennelier is a French brand but it's kind of fun for a Danish person to um, look at some of the color names because the pronunciation for let's just say gray is gris and a gris in Danish is a pig so <laughs> all the grayish tone, the gray is something something. I uh, read them in my head as the the piggy, the piggy gray and the <laughs> the, the piggy pink, you know. <laughs> so, but luckily for me, because I got this uh, portrait set, there are actually a lot of warm gray and cool gray mixes. So it's very very cool to have this set to do um, skin tones with because we do have a lot of um, green tones in our skin so kudos to those who put together the hues of the pastels in the portrait oil pastel set because um, they really took notice to us needing a gray green shade in a warm tone so yeah that was a long <laughs> sentence <laughs> but I'm just putting in like blobs of the um, you could say teal in random spots because I don't really want to go in with like a totally turquoise water surface because I think it will kind of damage the whole um, abstract composition to block it all in as water I'm not sure that uh, impressionism like to give the viewer that much so I'm trying not to define things too much which is super super duper nice if you want to attempt this then you would quickly realize that it's actually not so uh, scary to to do this at all now I'm thinking if I actually should come in with some golden tones because we are working with water uh, let me try it out over here I'm thinking golden because water do have that reflective sheen to make it look liquid so just to test it out I'm just sparingly giving myself something that looks like golden ripples
Okay, I can see that the camera is not picking it up, so maybe I should do this off camera. <laughs> this section or island of water lilies down here got one tone, and then the section up here in the reference photo is more like purple and turquoise. So I found two sticks that I think I'm gonna work with. It's like a mauve. Is it called mauve? Violet okra. <laughs> and then this is a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is exactly what I talked about before. This is an English pig. English grey. <laughs> so grease and glaze. <laughs> I am so sorry if I offended anyone. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we only got, you know. The, the laughs that we can create by ourselves <laughs> and this is one of them that was funny for me I'm going to use a different approach to the water up here I want to try some ellipse shaped um, deposits with the, the turquoise because I I want a more light like slanted perspective if you can call it call it that so with this uh, violet okra I'm not quite sure that I like that tone but hmm, maybe it is a good call after all I, I will see it the more the progress of this I can always come over it with a purple I just think that purple was too strong a color for this because uh, the dioxazine purple stick that I got in pastels are like super in your face potent so I wanted something that are a little bit pushed back But I may need to greet, grab the um, the purple stick and then just do a, a few strokes with it to emphasize that I'm working with, with purple tones. I got some gesso on this area here and it's nice to uh, to feel that while I'm smudging with the, the crayons let me go in with something shimmery let's try a silver oh my god I'm so experimental ooh I like that oh my god it's so beautiful I'm seeing this totally up close in my nose, you know, like, so I can really tell. I'm not sure camera ever picks up these very delicate silver fl flicks, like speckles. Love it. Once again, the camera doesn't really pick it up, so let me fiddle with this off camera. I think now is a good time to put in some of the colors on the flowers, just like the first very cautious coat. And because it's a pastel, I just need to touch some of the very grainy texture of the modeling paste. I picked up a pinkish tone and then a white stick and then a red stick so my idea is to just deposit first some pink push it back with the white and see where it needs the dark darker pink dark not dark red but a darker hue that was the seven okay let me go in with the white I am not really um, caring about any shape at this moment. That would be like the last 
a headache <laughs> to get some shape because um, on some of them I need to suggest a hint of a petal shape so it would be more recognizable what kind of flower it is actually but not on all of them just on some of them this is the dark and the way that I plan to use it is on the bottom of one side where I pretend that the light is not quite hitting the advantage of going in with a fat fleshy finger is that you can push the creamy petal the petal <laughs> You can push the creamy pastel into the divot of the modeling paste. But um, what to do about the top flowers up here? The reference pictures got them yellow. I want to do that too, but not like yellow, um, Hansa yellow. I, I want to go into a more like an orange yellow more orange tone because I like uh, working with warm tones so I'm gonna pick a, an orange and a yellow and then um, hmm, maybe go for a more lighter approach there's supposed to be five flowers up here Gosh, you can't even tell. I'm sorry. I am such an idiot when I'm filming. I seem to just squeeze in some yellow color and then I just do a smidgen of orange in that bottom right side of the flower because I imagine that that's going to be the kind of a shadow shadow side. And when that's in, I'm going to clean off my fingers and come in with the white. I was just checking that the tip of the white didn't have any pink on it. And I'm going to dab in and push back the warm yellow. And this is just the first deposit of color. It's going to be another one, so this is just a suggestion of of the color scheme. So at this moment I'm not so worried about how it looks. Okay. <laughs> now I want to aim for something that looks like a petal, where I can kind of stress out this is a petal and it's going to be a little bit difficult getting a sharp point because I don't want to be too specific on um, um, abstract piece if you can call this a piece So I just want <coughs> some of the petals to stand out. And this is where the oil pastel suddenly transform itself to this fat unsharp on pointed tool to work with <laughs> so <laughs> you kind of wish that you could grab something with a with a tip somehow so 
So I'm trying just to s squeeze down some marks and hope that it will uh, shape itself up in s in a petal shape. I'm actually just doing random random marks. One of the thing that I dislike about this work approach is that I'm sitting with the nose into the page, you know, so <laughs> I don't really get that um, opportunity that I really should to step away and look at this from a, a further distance than the 10 inches from my nose tip to, to the page. Yeah, I think that uh, now is a good time to come in with the second coat on this page and it's going to be about this sky formation area here. I want to find the perfect violet soft hue for that. I got the pastel oil set from Paul Rubens. And it consists of oil pastels in a very soft tone. <clears throat> so I think that I am able to find that kind of soft violet, like this stick right here. And then a body would be, a good body would be like this pinkish, or maybe this one actually. These two. And also some sort of blue toned. Oh, should I pick this one? Yeah, this one actually. Yeah. So if I got these three tones, I think I would be able to smudge in some of those really <laughs> strange marks that I can see that he had made. Oh. Uh, it's like he's going in with with a non sturdy like picture you 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 having like a little bit of shaky hand so your strokes are very light and not um you know not forced pushed uh, down And um, then he already down here starts with the circular formations. I'm going to work with one pastel at the time. So I kind of get one job down with one color <laughs> and then uh, pick up a different color okay then for the pink and the pink is just a buddy following the violet direction so they kind of team up and um, the blue here oh lord to make some sort of transition from the blue but not into the center of the I, I want to call it a sky because it makes me think about a heaven heavenly element and down here he also got these circular
ring shape actually I think he used the ring shape marks to simulate the surface of the water so instead of bringing in like a, a white highlight to symbolize the water he simply just make these rings that could look like some sort of a bug landed and made rings in the water He's going like totally <laughs> purple in this area here. I don't wish to do that. I think this looks a little bit strange, you know, looks a little bit weird. <laughs> so I'm hesitant by going in so purple over here. I think I would love to use another medium for that. Maybe, I don't know. Let me think. Let me think about it. So, but yeah. I'm gonna put back the pastels and then pick up a gray tone for the volume of the of the skies. I wonder what this is, if it's like fog underwater or if it is actually his part of showing some sort of reflection. can't really tell what, <laughs> why he puts in this, but I, I know that the, the whole function of this is to give him a construction where he can start on a new island of flowers so I kind of understand why he need to have divisions like this because he's totally shifting up the color hue of the new island of flowers and that's how he could actually paint that crazy room the oval room of water lilies because he constantly had islands of uh, each their color each their expression so it was actually pretty pretty clever done uh, somehow he's got circular shaped ripples in the water so instead of doing like um, horizontal strokes like I tend to like to do I have to try and work in some circular motions but I if I had to say something about the texture the choice of texture and texture not being something that's raised from the paper but a style of uh, laying down pigment I definitely would say that he's going for these um, marks that has the same round shape so in a way it uh, look harmoniously and becomes almost like um, what are they called when you're having like a small painting standing off itself it's called a ah <laughs> oh, damn it I wish that I was clever and knew what I was talking about um, what the heck is the name
it will come to me. Now I need okay, the purpose about doing upload is that I can actually stop the camera and find the word. It is called a thumbnail when you have some small squares where within you put your sketch and your practice pieces. Um, now I'm thinking about wanting to add in some blue over here to kind of simulate that the water is actually continuing so we are still in some sort of a, a pond. So I picked up a lighter shade of of blue for this drill here. And now like a aqua green to mix it up a little bit. I'm just going to indicate that an island of lilies is a uh, taking place outside, going outside, you know, the <laughs> frame of the painting. Is it a painting or a drawing? I would more call it more like a dr mixed media drawing, maybe, yeah, because I, I don't feel that I have hold the brush much on this drill here. Now I think I'm ready for the next exercise, which is to put in some gloss stencil and uh, work on the second layer. But so far I'm really satisfied with the first layer that I got down. I think it looks impressionistic. It looks like water lilies. <laughs> uh, I like the raised texture. So yeah, so far I'm, I'm pretty content. I picked a stencil with round shapes. Yes, <laughs> the best that I could do. <laughs> then I took the multi-mass, multi-medium gloss, for short, multi-mass, <laughs> the multi-mass paste. And I want to use that to give like a shiny, circular shape to give a different texture simulating water because it's going to be transparent and shiny. I'm not so sure if I got the correct stencil to do this, but uh, yeah, it, at least it's in circular uh, shapes, so it's not that far off. Then I took more of the um, modeling paste and gave myself some swirls up here in the sky so it looks a little bit like whipped cream right now <laughs> but um yeah let's go in with the second layer of texture i'm not gonna do it on everywhere just sporadically on chosen areas I will try and do some on the flowers to see. Oh, then I moved it. Can you see that? That was so not good. I totally moved it. Ooh, I don't know if I should uh, wipe it off and start all over. I probably should have. I'm going to give myself some gloss on the flowers because I want to see if they become different to look at. And if it's nice and I like it, I can do it on more of the flowers. And then some over here. The drill of this is also to give me 
a texture that's going to help fading out to the rest of the journal spread because it's like a clutch between what's painted and what's not touched so it's going to be like a a cheetah <laughs> method to fade out into um, the rest of the page Oh, totally out of control with this spatula here. I give it hmm. no I'm gonna let this dry up and see how it looks so the gloss gloss <laughs> okay the gloss matte stencil work has dried up and it does leave this uh, shiny texture so when you kind of look at the page it gives this this sparkly like it's wet or something so now I'm just gonna lightly coat it not everywhere but just like lightly coat it with this uh, peacock blue from Finnebear wax because I think I want to display some of the round circle shape in the transparent stencil pattern that I got here also give me like a <laughs> excuse to have my journal smell of the Finnebear wax which I really enjoy so I'm just going in on selected areas working in that blue tint Especially up here where the patterns sort of disappear in the white. But I like that plasticky <laughs> gloss that it has. It's like a haze, foggy, wet sheen. That's um meeting the viewer so I actually think it's it's pretty likable then I also need to work on the last step of this page spread I already tried to go over the corners with an ochre and a sage green just to kind of frame it in so now I'm thinking that I want to um, put in the weeping willow branches. I think I will continue with the okra and simply just draw myself some <laughs> long snake shapes. So my my three colors are going to be like a umber for the dark value and then ochre for the lightest and then a sage green. And it seems like they're tangling up. <clears throat> so as you can imagine I'm just gonna sit here and 
sketching a sort of a curtain of <laughs> green stuff. So this is the finished paste spread <laughs> with the the added branches right here. I really, really enjoyed making it. It was fun to create something where I didn't pick up a pencil and sketch from the start, but you could kind of say that I sketch with the spatula and the modular paste, modeling paste. Um, I like that it's got like this hazy, soft look, and the texture from the gloss medium kind of add to that and help it become like looking wet, you know, like a pond or something. <laughs> And then um, I, I think I know why Monet had these uh, with cream shaped um, motion here because now when it's finished and I got it placed in my own drawing, I can see that it may simulate some water running like these are waves or something running this way. So it's kind of fun, again, once again, that he doesn't use like uh, horizontal <laughs> stripes to indicate water as lots of painters are doing, that he actually used round curves and round C-shapes to bring that feeling of water and movement. But uh, overall, I'm really satisfied about this page spread. It was uh, fun to work like this. I I think it was a, uh, you know, also <laughs> a little bit uh, intimidating because I've never, you know, done a spread like this here before. So it was a, uh, a good one to make. I did a live stream this weekend where I worked on this page here, still uh, with the theme texture. I finished it off. It's uh, based on one of Banks's masterpieces. So I wanted to recreate, especially this one, to give me an opportunity to really work in some texture on the house wall. So <laughs> it was also uh, really fun to do. It takes a long time to work with texture, longer than you kind of think. But in the end, I, I find that it's worth it. I hope that you're able to see all the subtle, um, the subtle texture, if you can call it that. <laughs> all this yummy, the way that it just merged into, you know, the page and everything. So, oh, down here, I really love this pavement. So yeah, all in all, another fun page spread. <laughs> I think uh, now that I got footage of what I created right now on this upload, I will uh, take some footage of this to the beginning of this upload. So it's going to give you guys an opportunity to see what is supposed to come in this upload. And the uh, think that I will remember that <laughs> on my future uploads. So you can see the end result before watching the whole hour long <laughs> upload. <laughs> so, but thanks for watching if you followed along this far. This was a long one, right? <laughs> so, have a nice week.